1994, the regime of apartheid officially ended in South Africa amidst much celebration. It was heralded as one of the smoothest rides into democracy in history. But 14 years on, this beautiful country is battling some serious issues, namely some of the highest murder rape and AIDS rates in the world. But there is hope. With organizations such as St. Columbus Outreach, much food and clothing and good health and education are brought to the needy. This is a snapshot of some of their stories. St. Columbus was established 90 years ago to serve the surrounding communities. In the 1980s, as social ills and problems worsened, their evangelism became outreach, and they have constantly worked to bring hope and comfort and sometimes joy to the marginalized. We got up early to chat to the soup kitchen volunteers before catching up with the Reverend Martin Young, or Chunky, as he's affectionately known. We usually get here about 10 to 7, then the, the water is already boiling and then we add, um, we get frozen soup from a restaurant down the street and we add some dried vegetables and some soup uh, powder and we just stir it up. They live in the streets, many of them. This is their own, some of them the only meal that they get. They love the brood, I must say. Outreach has been going for about 24 years. St. Columbus has 33 outreach projects. It's born out of a commitment that we have to God, to Christ, to the church, to try and bring an aspect of humanity into people's lives who've been forced by circumstance to almost feel dehumanized, to feel raped by society. The wealth that's been generated through the economic empowerment programs has not filtered down. To the grassroots people. So what we try to do is fill up the gaps. We've been drawn into so many different communities within our bounds and outside of our borders and even outside of our country's borders to simply try and uplift people and their lifestyles who have absolutely nothing. Education has been an important point for us. We have four schools in Zambia, <coughs> seven schools in Zimbabwe and four schools in South Africa. But if we fed the children, we would get children to schools. To continue our feeding program was to source the maize here in South Africa. So St. Columbus is now committed to sending 10 tons of maize a month into Zimbabwe. The children will continue to be fed. Our country, especially Zimbabwe, are dependent on non-government organisations. The problem in most rural schools at the moment is the quality of the teachers. We've established a centre where teachers can come and get upgrades on their own qualifications. We have group therapy sessions that meet together to discuss what it's like living with HIV and AIDS. We provide them with high protein and energy foodstuffs, plus we pay for some of their antiretrovirals. Bethany is a home built to heal women and their children. The women who come here are victims of violent assault and abuse. We're able to take up to 50 women and children um, in the shelter and we're always at full capacity. This home is strictly for abused women, so it's people who are running from their partners in fear of their lives or, or just so broken and so beaten and with nowhere else to go. We've had people who've been shot, people who've been kicked off to death, a lot of incest, a lot of rape in their lives. Very few come here physically abused without being sexually abused and emotionally abused at the same time. The abuse, unfortunately, um, in the city is huge. It is, it's enormous. Um, it's just, and, it, and it's very, very cruel. And it's awful for the kids to see. There's, people don't, unfortunately, we seem to have lost our values, our morals. There's a huge amount of unemployment. I think the men get very frustrated they get angry, they grow up with a mom who's trying to do it all on her own. They don't have a male role model. The poorer people um, have domestic jobs, which are the lowest paid um, in, in this country. They normally arrive with the clothes on their back. Um, they come with their kids. We actually put their kids into school. We've got a, a creche, Little Saints Preschool. Little Saints is a community project. It's childcare for the people living in the area. Um, we have quite a lot of single mothers and single fathers, and so children need to be taken care of. We have 104 children. 
in our area it's not just an economic problem there's also a lot of alcohol abuse and drug abuse so you have to deal with the children even this week we had a father come in he had been at the police station since half past three in the morning having the mother locked up because she was so out of control and then brought the children to the crash to, to, to spend the day in safety. Basically, it's a school readiness program. So you're teaching the child life skills, you teach the, the education, there's the whole thing involved. When they go to school, they do really well at school. And St. Columbus gives us a regular donation every month, which has been fantastic. For example, when we took in new babies, we were able then to use that money to go and purchase some new cots. So we get the kids into school, we get the protection order, we get the kids organised um, to have counselling if need be, and then we do intensive counselling with the ladies here. Once they're, they're vaguely stable, then we actually find out where their skills lie. We do home care nursing, security, um, receptionists, a lot of, we, we give them all computer skills, we find them all jobs, and then we find an accommodation and the end result is we actually give them a bed, a pot, a pan, four cups, plates and saucers and send them out. And then they come back and they phone and they say I've got a surprise for you and they arrive with their car and their job and I know it's lovely. St Columbus helps us every year. They give us um, a, a monthly donation. They also help us could um, show our craft. You know, at, at every available opportunity, Bethany's always on their list to give stuff to. I've been here I'm about, about three weeks old, yeah, more or less, <coughs> and yeah, running away from an abusive partner who was threatening me, and I'm just trying to settle in at the moment. Well, yeah, I'm just getting to know the place and just to settle in. And the most important thing for me is safety, right? And I feel so safe that I can now move on with my life now and forget about that. I was staying with the father of my kids for six years. And he kicked me out in his house until I came here. I'm staying with my kids here. Yeah? Uh, since I came here, my life just changed because I'm free. I can talk, I can sing, I can do whatever. It's free, it's better than that. I'm starting my life again now. I'm just going out. Oh, I was married for 10 years. Um, my husband used to abuse me, abuse me, used to hit me, kick me. I was three months pregnant, pregnant with twins. He came home, he hit me on my stomach, he hit me with a, a, a tool for the car, he hit me on my head. And then he punched me, kicked me on my stomach, he hit me against the wall. I fainted and then I woke up in hospital actually after two days. Fortunately the babies were okay but but now when the babies were born I noticed that one of the boys is mentally retarded because of the kicking and the beatings. That's when I met Bridget Edwards who is a social worker at Bethany. It took a lot of crying, a lot of tears, a lot of a therapy, you know, I used to write things down, I used to pipe the pillows. You know, for me to get over the abuse, yeah, it really helped me. It helped me like with the therapy, the healing part of it, and also with um, helping me to, to further my studies. And since then, since 2002 until now, um, yes, yes, I work at Little Science Preschool. We love them. We're very determined in our home that if you enter our gates, you will leave a success. The Coronation Children's Hospital treats and largely heals about 250 children at any one time, from the tiniest premature babies through to teenagers. This is a pediatric ward. A lot of children are from disadvantaged backgrounds. So like there's things that perhaps the parents can't afford for their kids, the basic necessities like clothing and so forth. And the outreach does provide quite a bit for our kids here in the ward and we really do appreciate it. Easter time, Christmas time, they always bring uh, happiness to the ward for the kids that are here. It's always a pleasure to have them, giving them toys and sweets and goodies. Kangaroo ward is all about mother care in a kangaroo style. Baby is strapped onto the mother, directly onto her chest, between the two breasts and babies kept there. It's been kept warm, it keeps its temperature all the time and heartbeat is regular all the time, whereas in the incubator it's irregular and temperature changes from time to time. We normally get fabric 
donations or anything we get. And we make the pouches here at the hospital for the mums because we need the mummies to have their babies on them 24 hours. They've helped us quite a lot. They always had to donate little caps, jerseys. The material was given to us. We've made quite a bit of it. During the year, I visit on and off with the knitted garments that is done by the Dorcas ladies and other members of the church. We do a Christmas party for Coronation Hospital. We give each child, each baby, each child, a brand new toy. You know, we just try our very best to, and it spreads. I mean, you just actually can't keep up with what you can do. And our failing is, is the funding. The funding is, is, is a big problem because the children that are living in Soweto or the areas who aren't connected into a home are actually supporting themselves. Everything's a miracle. I mean, you just look at the, the love and the care that those nurses and doctors give to those children. If you can give them some love and some comfort and, and just the way they say thank you to you, it's such a delight. I don't need reward. That is my reward, my happiness. The Rainbow Clinic is based at Coronation. Here, Dr. Linda Cartwright and a dedicated team of four treat and counsel sexually abused children, many of them just toddlers. Sometimes there are 30 a month. This work is done in beautiful surroundings. We see anybody and everybody from anywhere and we do everything. We start off with taking a good history. Um, we examine the children top to toe, concentrating on looking for evidence, of course, of um, physical, sexual, emotional abuse. And we document it very carefully. We treat them, do the blood tests, do the counselling, and we follow them all up. And then, of course, going to court sometime afterwards is also part of what we, we do. About 80% of what we see in this clinic is sexual abuse. These children are usually groomed by perpetrators who are well known to them. One month old has been the youngest um, sexually abused child that we've seen and physical abuse the youngest has been six weeks. This clinic sees about 300 patients a year and if we consider that that is just one doctor, one social worker, one psychologist once a week, um, that is a huge number of patients and that's just the tip of the iceberg. We often took the panties away from the children as evidence. Uh, so a lot of the kids, because they were so poor, went home with nothing, with no underwear. And um, that's where Penny got involved with us and it started off with just a few panties um, which grew into bags um, which now contain toothpaste and toothbrushes and clips and brushes and face cloths and soap and a lot of the other equipment and stuff that we have in this room um, have actually come from that outreach program and it's not just the physical stuff that that I have valued it really has been the emotional support and the friendship that has developed between particularly myself and Penny. Jordan House is an intergenerational frail and AIDS care centre. Most of the guests here are elderly. Many are visited regularly, but most are what we call abandoned parents. This is a ministry where we are privileged to serve the aged. We have at least 85 residents at the moment. The different types of patients we have here is Parkinson's, dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, bedridden, schizophrenic, you name it. Their families don't have the time of day for most of them. We get free meals, we get medic free medical, a nice warm bed, a nice hot bath, we're very lucky. We haven't got the place to go, to stay here, very nice. It's a calling mm. to come and work with all people, you know, because it's so blessed to work with the people who are in need. Jordan House, all their job is a place of safety. It's a home. It's a home where there's lots of love and there's a home, it's a home where there's lots of caring, you know. We are always appealing to the public to assist us with funding. The aged are very much forgotten. It's the little they need, but yet it's that little that gets them through. There's a source that we totally rely on, which is St. Columbus. They have outshined, they've outdone themselves and we know that we are going to have their ongoing support. Tusanu, meaning to work together, is run in the church hall every Thursday. 
up to 16 volunteers spend either the morning or the afternoon transferring skills to mostly domestic staff. We have morning sewing classes and we have an afternoon sewing class. We also have um, embroidery classes where they learn embroidery and smocking. We have knitting. Um, we have patchwork and we have a literacy class. Our students are women trying to support families. Uh, a lot of them don't have a partner or a husband or a spouse. And as I said earlier, some of them have even taken on additional family members who have passed away, usually due to AIDS or AIDS related. They don't earn a very high salary at all. So it's, it's not an easy life for them. But what astounded me most when I came here is how cheerful they are. They didn't believe it. And I made it here. Yes, oh. I didn't buy that, make it here. When I started, it was a little bit hard because I wouldn't even write one, you see. And then the English also very much better. If I come to the bank, I can sign by myself. Some things like that. Before I could, I could just make like a cross. <laughs> My one daughter she did come here for um, for sewing, the one, and she done very good. She done very very good sewing, and now she's working. So got this only business now, it home. You mustn't say oh, you say I'm out. I'm not going to school anymore, I'm not doing anything anymore. And it's very good exercising to come here, walk and go back home, some things like that. The church organises packages for the impoverished elderly, using foodstuffs and donations given by the congregation. This is called the pantry. They live on the government old age pension, that is a requirement before I take them on my list, of 860 rand a month, out of which they must pay rent, electricity or services. They are old, most of them are now infirm, they hardly, they live in the most grotty buildings, they can seldom ever leave the building, they're not safe. They live on the 28 items that I give them every month. I feed 42 families and all these items around here are the things that go into the box. The costs have gone up by a third in the last six months. I rely on donations from the congregation and then once a month I count and then I top it up from the funds of the church. I shop and buy the remainder things. I have teams of people who deliver to the people. More and more we're getting people who didn't make provision for their old age for one reason or another. And now we're getting more and more black families coming on where the parents have died of AIDS and the grandparents have got two or three kiddies they're trying to bring up. It's heartrending to go into these awful, awful places that they live in and deliver their goods to them every month. And they will stretch these 28 items for the whole month. The only meat they ever see is the tins of meat that I give them three of these a month. Mm. That's the only time they haven't seen fresh anything or cheese or things are too expensive for me to be able to give them for a long, long time. We don't have a welfare system. You have to try and look after yourself. We found two poor old black gentlemen who had nothing except a mattress, nothing else in their flat, mm. it was empty of everything. So we've managed to get them a chair and a table and we asked the congregation if they can give us a fridge, a hot plate and all these things come from somewhere. So I have the biggest budget in all of our outreach and I'm going way over because I can't cut down, these people desperately rely on these items. Agape is a loving home in Yeovil for 30 odd abandoned children of the city streets from two weeks old and upwards. It serves the Yeovil area mostly and has excellent relationships with the community and the Yeovil police who continuously bring children that they find. Intake is mostly babies who have been abandoned, um, abused, you know, children who are really in need of care, but very young children. Well, the youngest is two months and the eldest is now about to turn 15 next month, but he's been with me since he was four. They grow up here. The whole focus of this home is that it is a home. It's a family home. It will always be here for them. One of the big pitfalls, of course, of being abandoned is that you never have that. You never know where home is, you know, there's nothing. You feel like you... And I've listened to so many children talk about 
what is lacking in their lives and that's one of the big things you know I want children to grow up as an, in a natural environment we never put our children on for show for anybody we are available 24 hours so like sometimes they'll pick up a baby at two o'clock some in the morning you know and then they'll bring them in the house in total we have 38 39 40, 42 if we find there's a great need for that particular type of person will act will try and access that kind of service so that they get the help that they need you know. i really want them to learn to live positively i don't mind what they choose to do in life as long as they have a skill of some sort that means they can go out they can earn their own money they can have their own place to stay and you know and make a difference in other people's lives we've had three children adopted already from the home um, and we do, we do put them on lists. We do like have one or two social workers that we say, well, these are the children that are available. Mm -hmm. I can just pick up a phone and phone outreach and say, this is my desperate plea or my need for today. This is where we act, please help us. And of course, financially, they've been a huge, huge help. We wouldn't have survived without them. Yeah. <laughs> That's the absolute truth of the matter. We've met huge challenges in South Africa. I think the church stands and falls and what it does for the poor. South Africa faces some major challenges, but there's a huge sense of optimism here. A popular advert states, South Africa is possible. With the good folk of St. Columbus, it certainly seems there's a light shining on the dark continent. <laughs>